His Netflix original stand-up special, Burt Kreischer's Secret Time, is available for streaming this very Friday, shot at the Trocadero Theater in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And joining us right here on the show is none other than Burt Kreischer. Good to see you, Burt. I spent all my college with you. Like, Did when, we, Is that right? I'm being dead serious. It's so creepy running into you because I see when I go, oh, so many times you get out of class, go to the fraternity house, sit in the lounge, and it'd just be you and Stuart Scott, and you just, I mean, that was our day. I used to say, <laughs> um, you, I mean, this is back in the day before phones, so you didn't have like a phone to scroll through. You right. were our scrolling. We just watched you 20 times. Just sit there just all day. Rolling Stone magazine discovered me in 1997. Yes. And he said to me, so like I'm going to, this art, this journalist, like I'm going to mm -hmm. follow you around for a day. Right. So the first day is like, all right, so what do we do? And I was like, oh, we just watch them all day. It's me and Stu? Yeah. And I was like, that's all we're going to do is just watch them all day. And he was like, that's all you do? And after like the third episode, third time, I'm like, I guess we should go do something else. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. The, the re-airs of those sports centers that we used to do. You know, we would do them at one in the morning and then two in the morning again, and then whatever mistakes were made, or if uh, there was somebody having trouble throwing strikes out on the West Coast and a game was going on an inning like 14, 15, yeah. we'd have to sit there and wait till it finished. And we'd go to, we'd be walking off the set 3 30, 4 in the morning in Connecticut, go to sleep, wake up like the next day. We thought, well, like, nobody just watched what the hell we just saw. Oh, I got and the opportunity to that's have... That's the way we were feeling on the other side of the television set. I got the opportunity to have more than drinks with Stuart Scott. So when I'm was in, this? I'm in New York. This has got to be 2000, 99, 2000. Okay. And I'm in New York. I'm starting standing. I'm just starting. So I'm this like, is when Stu and I were on the air together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And and he is in New York City. He was friends with a friend of mine named Val. And they came and saw me do stand-up. And I get off stage. I did good. I get off stage, I see Stuart Scott. That's the best is when you get off stage and you see the celebrity and you're like, oh, I just murdered. They're going to love me. Right. And he was like, he was like, you're funny. And I was like, oh, thanks. And he was like, we should go get a drink. And I was like, okay, this is before cell phones. This is when you had to talk to someone. Right. <laughs> and so we sat and had drinks. And then he goes, I haven't eaten. Do you mind if I eat? And I was like, oh, yeah, order a three course meal. <laughs> and we talked. And I was like, and I was like, what's the one thing I need to know? Because I just started my career. I go, well, how do I make it in this business? Mm -hmm. And he's like, this is where you cringe. He goes, ignore the haters. And I said, oh, yeah. And I go, oh, yeah. And he goes, he goes, I used to get a lot of hate when I first started. And I go, I know. And he goes, how do you know? And I, went, <laughs> I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I was like, no, I just assumed maybe. <laughs> but he was great. He was really generous. We ended up, I mean, I ended up having probably five drinks. He ate a meal, and it was great. He was oh, a sweet guy. Oh, I thought the advice he gave you was take your shirt off doing stand-up. <laughs> And that's that's why you take your shirt off doing stand-up. I wish I had a real reason of why I knew I took my shirt off. I just did it one time, uh -huh. and then it it worked. It worked, and then I was on the road, and you know there, there are no rules on the road, so you're drinking, smoke a little weed, take your shirt <laughs> off, and then next thing you know, you go to shoot a Showtime special, and they're yeah. like, "You'll be wearing a shirt, right?" And you're like, "Oh, I haven't worn a shirt in seven years on stage. I'm not doing it now." And then I did it for my Showtime special. Mm -hmm. My machine story went viral shirtless. Yes. And then it got to the point where people would run into me and they're like, I know you. Wait, oh, I didn't recognize you with your shirt on. Mm -hmm. And then when I did Netflix, they're like, you're not wearing a shirt, right? And I was like, yeah. And so, I'm, yeah, now I'm never wearing a shirt for stand-up. Oh, okay. And so that's every time now? It's every time I do stand-up, yeah, I won't wear a shirt. At all. I feel really comfortable shirtless. Now, you're married, right? Yeah. What does your wife think of that uh, piece of uh, stand-up um, uh, material? Of of me shirtless? Yes, sir. Well, uh, just of you taking your shirt off, and that's part of your gig. Well, Obviously, she she knew what she was getting into. Correct? Oh yeah, she's perimenopausal. She looks at me <laughs> as like she looks at I'm like a perfect body for a for a 48 year old woman because they're like, oh, life insurance policy. This is gonna be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just what she's thinking? Yeah, no dude in the steam room looks at me like, hello, but man, <laughs> older white women, oh, I'll collect $2 million in five years, write a book, get a new boyfriend, put the girls in college. <laughs> so take your shirt off. Take the shirt off, big boy. Take it off. <laughs> Comedian Bert Kreischer here on The Rich Eisen Show. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, now, we are a, a safe for work environment here yes. on The Rich Eisen Show. Can you tell the re the story as to why you were nicknamed the machine? Bert. Yeah. Okay. When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian mafia. Um, by the way, I never heard a story start that way. By the way. <laughs> Thank God. I know. <laughs> what if he's like, oh, a lot of people oh, have this story. Yeah, I know. Again. Okay. So. Uh, I went to school at Florida State, and I signed up. I wasn't a good student. I signed up for a Russian class, think it was Spanish, and next <laughs> thing you know, I'm in a Russian class. The teacher was like, just take the class. I'll give you a C. We need people to take the class. 
I take four semesters, never learn it. This is Florida State? Florida State, yeah. This is the Charlie Ward work done years. And so, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> they weren't the only ones skating by. <laughs> <laughs> the shoes were free in Russian class, too, is oh, what you're saying? Yeah. Dude, I got passed at a lot of classes because they were like, just stop coming. You're driving me crazy. I'll give you a C. <laughs> And so I took Russian one, two, three, and four. And then they were like, we're taking a trip to Russia. If you go, you get a minor. I was like, I'm in. So I went to Russia. And this is when the mob ran everything and told us that. They're like, the mob runs everything. We paid them off. Uh -huh. And they were my neighbors. So the first night, I grabbed a bottle of vodka and a six-pack of Baltic, which is their beer. And I meant to say a sentence. But what I came out of my mouth when the door opened and I'm faced with, a, faced with a gangster, all I said was, I'm the machine in Russian. He started laughing hysterically. Brought in a room full of nine Russian gangsters. He's like, he's the machine. I'm like, I'm the machine. <laughs> and I got drunk shot for shot with them. And then we partied. We became best friends. Cut to whole class takes an overnight train trip to Moscow. We get two new gangsters, right? Igor and Igor are their names. <laughs> yeah, there weren't a lot of names in Russia. <laughs> And the, and 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 the second we get on the on the train, they put me in first class. The conductor walks in. Like these guys love me. My guy's like, this is the machine. Give them vodka. You have a blast. We drink all the booze in an hour. Big Igor's like, machine. We go to the bar cart to get more vodka. I'm like, I'm in the mob. I'll do whatever I want. Roll into the bar cart thick. Igor says to me in Russian, he goes, machine, go behind the bar and grab bread in Russian. And I understood him. For a second, I'm like, I'm learning the language. Finally. <laughs> my way not through flashcards and textbooks but by joining the mafia i'm behind the bar he's like grab vodka i was like i already know that one he's like grab the money i'm like huh <laughs> he's like grab the money and i realized we're robbing the bar cart <laughs> grab the stuff go back to our first class cabin english teacher not a russian teacher english teacher comes in doesn't know russian to our first class cabin opens the door with that like liberal arts confidence mm -hmm. she's like this is over Big Igor looks at me, takes a sip of vodka, spits it in her eyes, and goes, no one talks to the machine like that. <laughs> Shuts the door in her face and goes, screw this chick, this is Rasha. He's like, don't worry, machine, when it gets dark, we have good time. I'm like, what are we doing when it gets dark? <laughs> he reaches in his pocket, pulls out a ring of keys, and goes, we're robbing the whole train. So we robbed him. We robbed the whole train. <laughs> what? We robbed the whole train, pulled into Moscow, 6 a.m., hammered, wasted, right? Train stops, sun's up. Door open, same teacher, not mad. Smiles at me and goes, I want to be the one to tell you they've alerted the police. And sure enough, I see two cops on the platform talking to my whole class. They're in the pajamas. They're upset. They got robbed. I get it. <laughs> Igor says, Igor goes, don't worry, machine. I talked to police for both of us. Goes out to the cop. He's taking a statement. Grabs him by the arm. Spins him around and starts yelling, hur, 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 in Russian. I don't know what he's saying, but it doesn't look like, I can make pizza. Do you like pizza? <laughs> now the cop's just staring at me, and I hear him yell, Pajom, zidiz, gidiz, which I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound like, you're okay, stay there. <laughs> I walk to the cop, who's standing in front of the class I just robbed. Next to the gangster <laughs> I robbed them with. He grabs me by the arm, spins me away from my class, away from Igor, gets right in my face and goes, so, I understand you're the machine. <laughs> Tonight you party with us. And I was like, wait, wait, I'm not in trouble. And he goes, no, screw that chick. This is Russia. <laughs> yeah. It's a great story. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, yeah. So are you, I have to ask, are you, are you out of the mafia now? No. Oh, my God. Can I tell you what happened? This girl came up to me and goes, um, you're the machine. I went, yeah. And she goes, oh, my gosh, my whole family lives out in Brighton Beach and they're all Russian, and they all watch that story. And I'm like, that's where the Russian mob is. I am terrified I'm going to get a corporate gig one time. And they're like, yeah, show up. It's 20 grand. Just tell the machine story. It's going to be all made men with tattoos and track suits. No, I haven't talked to anyone in the mob in a while. Have you ever played Mar-a-Lago? No. Okay. Just got to ask that. <laughs> I'm going to take a 60-second break. We come back with the comedian, Burt Kreischer. You've got a Don Mattingly story that's going to upset me. Is that what I'm told? Because he's my favorite player of all time. It's not going to be as good as the machine. <laughs> no, my God. no I, I imagine Nothing things well. are low. Okay, very good. <laughs> Burt Kreischer, uh, the comedian with a Burt Kreischer secret time when we come back in 60 seconds. Comedian Burt Kreischer, a.k.a. The Machine, here uh, on The Rich Eisen Show. Uh, so you're from Florida. I grew up in Tampa. Okay, so you, you grew up in the, what the, so I'm trying to figure it out. So you're, you, you say you were in college in 97. I was there for the, the Charlie Ward work done, Bro uh, Derek Brooks heyday. At you Florida something State. something funny? Okay. When I was in college, there was, uh, 
there was a little they used to do single tapes by the counter when you check out at the gas stations mm -hmm. and there was a tape that said brooks and dunn <laughs> and i thought Oh, cool! Derek Brooks and Work Dunn put out a hip hop album. <laughs> so I, I grab it. I'm not even. Lying. I grab it. I buy it. It's like a dollar. They were a dollar. Yeah. And I put it in my tape deck, and it's country. Now I'm an open minded guy. I was like, okay, all right. I you, love. I love the way they play. You still thought it was Brooks and Dunn at that point? And I'm like, they're not that bad. They're not that bad. <laughs> and I'm like, that is amazing. Like, of course, you know, like Charlie Pride. There are black guys that can sing country like that. And I'm like, yeah. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I was playing it for people going, dude, check out Derek Brooks and Warwick Dunn's album. And they were like, this is good. <laughs> yeah, but I was there during the Charlie Ward, Derek Brooks days, Warwick Dunn. Okay. I graduated and sat next to Warwick Dunn, and he was going to Tampa, and I grew up in Tampa. We were sitting next to each other. You graduated sitting next to Warwick Dunn. Yeah, but, and I'll tell you why. Because I was written up in Rolling Stone magazine as the number one party animal, and I think they wanted... They said work done and the place went nuts and then they slid my name in right behind him and Bert Kreischer. And so no one even heard my name and they were still cheering for work done. But I told him, I was like, I was like, hey man, you're going to Tampa. I got a lot of friends in Tampa. If you want me to hook you up with some friends in Tampa. And he just looked at me and was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I work done the nicest guy. Work done is the nicest guy in the world. But yeah, yeah. How the, dare you try to corrupt Warwick Dunn? My I God. Was like, Come what on, is, man, go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you try to do that, sweet Warwick Dunn? Yeah, and okay. so and then I was in Tampa during the Bucks when the Bucks were absolutely and horrible. Brutal. Right. Terrible. Brutal. But my hero growing up, my hero was Doug Williams. Love, I mean, that's the man. Dude, I had a rabbit. I named the rabbit Doug Williams. Are you serious? Dude, I was obsessed with Doug Williams. Just my dad would say things. You know, when your dad says something, it just lays on you. He's like, Look at the touch this man has. He can just, oh, look at it, feather into the end zone. And I'd be like, One day that'll be like me. But yeah, yeah, I was so. Did you try? Did you ever try to play football? I played football. I hurt my neck and then just played baseball. I played baseball and then went to Florida State. Yeah. And was yeah, gonna... that's a serious program. No, was when I went to walk on first practice. Coach Martin came up to me and he's like, we got a lot of catchers, but we always can use a bullpen catcher. Yeah. And I, wa I was in the uniform. I walked out left field fence, walked right past all the pitchers. I was like, I am not catching bullpen. Walked back to Sally Dorm. Chili Willie and Paul Pisa were getting high. I walked into my room. <laughs> uniform still on. We used to do this thing called time traveling where we get high and pitch black. And I got high, listened to uh, Pink Floyd, and I was like, I think I'm going to party professionally. <laughs> I'm done with baseball. And I was like, yup. And that, that's, that's, that's the end of sports. And the rest is now the machine exists. Yeah, and now I'm here. And now you're here. <laughs> I think I, I would have never met you as an athlete. What a truly inspirational story, Bert. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. You know, you never know when you know, you're going to turn that corner and make a decision in your life. Um, so, all right, let's get to this Mattingly story. What what happened with you and Don Mattingly? That's, okay, so just understand this as you tell this story. <laughs> uh, and I know I'm telling this to a man who just told that story about being nicknamed the machine. Uh, because that's the way that you got in tight with the Russian mafia yeah. and are planning on your next tour to finish in Moscow and tell that story in Moscow. Yeah. I fully understand I'm telling that guy <laughs> that Don Mattingly is my favorite baseball player of all time. Okay, Don Mattingly I th okay. is from Tampa. Okay. He's from he's from Indiana. No, but he 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 would him and Fred McGriff would take batting practice. Well, the Yankees training yeah, yeah. spring training that's complex was in say. Tampa, Florida. That's what I meant to say. Okay. I'm not Wikipedia. So <laughs> him and Fred McGriff would take nice. BP at our high school, okay? Okay. So they show up. Don Mattingly had just a badass uh, uh, Mercedes, and him and Fred McGriff show up. So this is in the 80s. We're talking in the 80s. No, here, this right? is the 90s. The 90s. 90s. Not, well, probably, yeah, you're probably 89. Okay. 80, 89. Sure. So me and Scott Bobier are getting in trouble, and we got to run player appreciations. Fred McGriff and Don Mattingly are taking batting practice on our field. A player appreciation was when you had to run from home plate to each of the sponsor's signs in the, in the fence. Mm -hmm. So they're taking batting practice, and we're like, what are the odds that we're going to get hit by a ball? So we're doing left field, and I'm talking to Scott, and we're jogging, and Scott's telling me some inane story, and all of a sudden, a baseball hits him in the back of the head, and he goes flat on the ground <laughs> unconscious. And I look up, and Don Matting and Fred McGriff are dying laughing. And I'm like, and they're like, sorry. And I was like, oh my God. So I'm like, Babir, are you okay? And he like pops up, and he's like, what happened? I go, fly ball hit you in the back of the head. And he was like, oh. And they're like, Bring the ball back. We'll sign it. <laughs> we're like, okay. So we keep running, and we're now in right field, and Scott's telling another story and just sink ball again. <laughs> and I hear them go, 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, ah. And then Fred McGriff's like, bring it back. We'll sign both of them. You can both have a ball. <laughs> so after that, they were just aiming at us. <laughs> Dude. After that story is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don Melly and Fred McGriff. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying.
So that's next amazing. time Mattingly's on the show, because well, we've never had the crime dog, they have to remember the time where two high school kids in Tampa, Florida, <laughs> yep. were their own like personal target practice. I can tell you where they parked their car. That's how true this story is. Right in front of the Casper Center in the dirt. Because I remember Don Mattingly getting out and looking at his rims going, ah, oh, it's covered in dirt now. <laughs> It's like when you're at the driving range and you're trying to hit the guy yeah, in the cart. Yeah, in the cart. You're trying to hit the cart guy. And I remember, I remember telling our coach that, and coach goes, you know what you should learn? How good he can go opposite field. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, really? Because they were trying to teach us that at the time. It was like, play opposite right. field with it for like a hit and run. Oh, you to see, see the ball and yeah. hit, it, hit it where you see it. Yeah. <laughs> Look how good he can go opposite field. I was like, well, yeah. Tell it to Bo Beer, who's got CTE now. <laughs> yeah. It is a life lesson, man. Oh, it is a God. life lesson. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, your upcoming tour dates, you're right, you're, you're hanging out here in the Southern California area over the next couple of weeks, then in Kansas City on September 13th, Madison, Wisconsin. For somebody who partied in college, that is going to be, that's kind of like ground zero for you, is it not? It's mecca. I that's mecca. That's when, why you go and then the, and the guys are like, no, 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 this is the kind of beer you should be drinking. I like that. And, yeah. no, and, no, and I look hot there, like I'm really in shape. <laughs> They're like, whoa, you work out? I'm like, oh, yeah, kind of. Oh my gosh! And what was it like uh, shooting this in Philly? I mean, you, that must have been a fun time for you in Philly. Burt Kreischer, Secret Time uh, on Netflix. You it, shot it in Philly. It was amazing. Philly's my so I, I like that's my type of person. Mm -hmm. Like those East Coast cities, and it was right after the Super Bowl, so they were like, all anyone had to do was e, and and they would lose their mind. And right. it was great. It was it was, I, I think the best experience I've ever had in stand up. Um, you know, and it's all fans. They all know me. And I'd been there for the parade. I showed up when the parade was there. No kidding. Random. Random. I just was in Philly. I don't know why, but I was in Philly, mm -hmm. and I went in and did Preston and Steve, which is the big radio show, and I was walking through the streets, and like that's a, one of the first places I ever told the machine story on stage, and they were just like, you're walking through, and they're like, the machine! At one point, I got stuck. I couldn't get across the street because it was all blocked off, and I was like, I got to catch a flight, and this guy goes, machine, I got you. You got a pound of beer with me. And I was like, it's like eight in the morning. I'm like, done. <laughs> Murdered a beer. And he goes, it's the subway systems. And he took me <laughs> under the street. And I was like, oh, I feel like I'm in some sort of Harry Potter movie. <laughs> Philly, man, they are, they will, they will throw your arms around you, man. I know. Oh. And, and, and they get a bad rap. They, they always get a bad rap. But they were great to us for the draft and winning the Super Bowl. Oh, I'm great. sure I was all good in that hood that day. Wow. To be Bro. there as well for that parade. Unbelievable. And then, you know, but Tampa does well in Philly. They closed out the vet and they opened up the link with a win. Oh, Both yeah. of them. They beat, they beat the Eagles in that NFC Championship game to go on to the Super Bowl. I remember watching when the when the Bucks would play the Eagles. And I was I, my, full, my whole family grew up in, in Philly, so you'd have to root for the Eagles in our house. Harold Carmichael. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's all. Did Wilbert Montgomery back in that day, Jaws? Oh, Jaws. That, and that's when I was like, that's the prototype of a quarterback. And now you look at him and you're like, how did you ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> he, well, I think he quarterbacks with his shirt off. Maybe that's why the two of you guys get, uh, get along so Maybe well. Maybe I should get those tearaway jerseys when I get on stage and just that, you should do that uh before you go you have a story of betting a 10 year old at a Rams game is that a true oh, story oh yeah 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 uh uh we got season tickets for the Rams we're all season ticket holders first game of the first time they're here is Rams Seahawks that's right yes there's and, a week two game yeah and yep. my buddy's kid uh I'll say his real name give him a shout out Carter Grusin he's 10 years old at the time mm -hmm. he comes out in the Seahawks jersey I go bro we just got eight season tickets to the Rams <laughs> you're a Rams fan now and he's like nope and I was like, no, you are. I'm not going to a game with you in a Seahawks jersey. He goes, I'm a Seahawks fan. And I go, all right, bet you that the Rams beat the Seahawks. He goes, no way. He's 10. And I go, bet. And he goes, how much? I go, 200 bucks. And he's like, okay, I take it. And then his dad goes, buddy, you don't have 200 bucks. And he goes, what do you want from me? I go, school's about to start on Monday. This is Sunday. I go, if the Rams win, I get to cut your hair. And he's <sighs> like, he's like, done. And I go, and his dad's like, hold on one second. Think this bet through, Carter. School starts tomorrow. The Rams win, Burt cuts your hair, and he goes, done. I don't, there's no reason to think it through. Seahawks going to win. I'm going to have 200 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the game. I get drunk as crap, and the Rams beat the Seahawks, right? <laughs> We're driving home in my expedition, and I am howling, laughing, Googling pictures of how I'm going to cut his hair. <laughs> I get my clippers. I get a GoPro. I get back to their house, and the first thing I do is I cut his bangs like Simple Jack from Tropic Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> and I pull away, and I start crying, laughing, and this 10-year-old looks at me dead serious. He goes, does it look good? <laughs> oh, <laughs> go, oh, you God. thought I wanted to cut your hair? I go, nobody. I'm messing your head up. And he goes, 
wait, 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 wait. This wasn't the bet. His dad goes, this is part of being a man. You should have thought this bet through. <laughs> man, this segment's all about tough love. High school was oh being hit God. by baseballs from Matty Lee McGriff. <laughs> and the machine to... cutting a 10-year-old's head to teach him a lesson on sports betting. Oh, wow. He looked like a brand new hip-hop star. <laughs> Just back to here, here big ball spot. <laughs> <laughs> You're crying. Oh. Uh, at Bert Kreischer on Twitter. Check out the uh, Netflix original stand-up special streaming on Friday. Bert Kreischer, Secret Time. Let's do this again, sir. Please, man. It's an honor. And it's an honor. A- and stay away from my 10-year-old. <laughs> the Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.